Hi, I'm Will from Tested. I'm Norm from Tested. Norm. We have the iPad mini. Boy, do I wish I had a giant bucket of eggs, hard boiled eggs, to not have to eat. Is it because you love eggs so much? Because I hate eggs and I don't have to eat them because Apple actually did release an iPad mini. So this is uh, Apple's uh, seven inch tablet. It's actually 7.9 inch screen. It's a four by three aspect ratio as it has been before. It is very, very small compared to previous 10 inch iPads. And what Apple would actually say is that this, they would make the distinction that this is actually not a seven inch tablet. They want to poo poo those 16 by nine, seven inch tablets. This is a four by three, 7.9 inch tablet, which grants you maybe 30, 35% more real screen um, real estate? It's 22 square inches for the seven inch tablets versus 29.6 square inches for the four by three tablet. Uh, so let's talk about hardware a little bit. There's a couple of things that are interesting about this. It's kind of, it's almost like an iPad 2 crammed into a smaller case. Yeah. It's an A5 processor, the same that was in the iPad 2 and the iPhone, iPhone 4S. 4S. Mm -hmm. um, the camera on the back is the five megapixel camera from the iPhone 4. Mm -hmm. uh, the front facing camera, camera is a FaceTime HD camera, so it's like 1.6 megapixels or something like that. 1.2 megapixels, which the, the camera is better than the iPad 2, but you're right. It has a lot of the same internal components as an iPad 2, yeah. which makes it cheaper for Apple to manufacture this device. 512 megabytes of memory, RAM. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes in the normal 1632, 64 gigabyte storage configurations, and it works reasonably well. Uh, a couple of things that are different between this and the newer iPad and the iPhone 5 are the screen. It's a smaller 1024 by 768 screen, so the pixel density is greater than it is on the iPad 2, but it's um, the screen's more analogous to the iPad 2 than the iPhone 5 or the iPad third generation and newer iP iP so iPad So what Apple did is that they had two choices when making the 7.9 inch screen, because the iP original iPad, iPad 2, iPad 3, and 4 are 9.7 inch screens, right. which were 1024 by 768, or the 2048 by 1536, uh -huh. really high retina resolution. Right. They couldn't cram that really high retina resolution into a 7.9 inch screen and still make it affordable. Like that, that doesn't exist. That screen size and resolution doesn't really exist right it now. It doesn't really exist right now. So what they did is actually they figured out that with the original iPhone 3G and 3GS screen, that if you stretch it out to 7.9, you're saying the pixel density of those original screens. It's the screens. exact same pixel density. So okay. if you have an iPhone 3G or an iPhone 3GS, or if you an original iPhone, look at that, the pixels actually look very similar. Obviously, it's a little better panel. The reflectance is better than on those old phones. Mm -hmm. The color is better. But it's not as nice it, as something like an iPad 3, iPad yeah. 4, or the iPhone 4. I mean, when you look at the 5. newer, when you look at the newer panels that have the full NTSC gamut, so that means that they show all of the the colors described by this by this really super esoteric thing. Uh, but the upshot is the colors look richer and deeper. There's less dithering on the blacks. Uh, this looks much closer to I, like I dusted out the old iPad 2 to check it out. It looks very much like the iPad 2, uh, iPhone 4. Uh, sorry, 3G screens than it does the iPhone 4S 5, but especially the 5 and the, and the so iPad 3. So we all have, both screen. of us have iPhone 5s and mm -hmm. that new iPad 3 with the Retina screens. And yeah. going down to the iPad mini, how does that screen look? So uh, you notice it most on text. When you're reading text, especially dark text on a very light black background, uh, it looks fuzzy. I, like I said, I took out the old iPad 2 just to kind of compare. It definitely looks better than the iPad 2 from a font rendering perspective, but you can tell that there's no subpixel aliasing, uh, any aliasing on the fonts as they're rendered. And that's really the only place you notice it. There's a couple of other places that it's immediately apparent. For example, if you're watching it, if you're in landscape mode, and you're watching video, you're not going to get full 720p video out of this because, it'll be, the, because there'll be bars yeah. and you'll end up shrinking. The 768 pixels aren't fully used. Right. Uh, I didn't find that to be too big of a problem, but it is something that if you watch a lot of video on the iPad, you'll notice. And DisplayMate did a comparison, did some thorough tests between the iPad mini, Nexus 7, and the Kindle Fire HD, mm -hmm. and came to the conclusion that the iPad mini screen is a little more reflective, uh, you, a little more glary than yeah. the Nexus 7 screen. So it's, it's, the thing I would say is it's not a bad screen. I mean, the iPad 2 did not have a bad screen. It's just now there's much better screens out there. And you notice that when you're, when you're transitioning from an iPad 3 or 4 or iPhone 5 down to this. The thing that I find is that this is much more comfortable to hold and use. The iPad, the, the full-size 10-inch iPad is too heavy for one-handed use comfortably. No, it is a, clearly a two-handed device yeah. at you know, um, over a pound. It, you're, it's gonna, you're gonna hurt your wrist. You can, you'll cause tendon damage, is what the doctor told me if you hold it one hand yeah. for an extended period of time. On the other hand, this is much more comfortable to hold. It's very close to the weight of a Kindle uh, Touch or Paperwhite. Uh, it's within a couple of, couple of ounces, so you really don't notice the difference when you pick it up. 
And I find that I hold it one-handed like this. With the, in the corner. With, in the corner. Not gripping it like the iPad. Not the weird Phil Schiller grip yeah. from the keynote. Uh, it's, you can hold it like this comfortably for a long time. iOS 6 introduced thumb detection. So if you keep your thumb near the edge of the bezel, it doesn't notice it as much. It's not perfect, but it mm -hmm. works okay most of the time. I have had some instances where you were trying to scroll something and you, you completely lose the, the edge detection and the scrolling just doesn't work. But uh, even with the thin bezel on this iPad, it's very usable it, with a one-handed grip, which I that, think is important. That was my big concern with the iPad mini because it does have a narrower bezel mm -hmm. than any of the other iPads and also then the Nexus 7 or the Kindle Fire HD. Yeah. But with that thumb detection, it actually is usable it, it's, with it's not great. one thumb. I mean, it's side. not perfect, but it's okay. And, it, and you can actually get more onto the bezel, more off of the bezel than you are right there. It'll just ignore that after a while. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, there's some places like games specifically where third-party apps don't work exactly the way you'd expect with it. I assume that that'll be fixed as they update their apps. Weight um, is also a huge advantage of the iPad mini over the traditional Yeah, iPad. so it's 0.68 pounds, which is like 11 ounces, a little bit under 11 308 ounces. 308 grams. Or six guys. Altoid tins, if you were telling sure. me how much it weighed. I find that it's very easy to use in bed. And the backlight goes dim enough so that you can use it in a dark room and won't blind, blind your spouse or significant other. In terms of thickness, uh, it is thinner than the Nexus 7. It actually fits right in between the thickness of a new iPhone 5 yeah. and the super ultra-thin iPod Touch. So the thing I would say is that like, if you're looking into the future and you want to see what Apple's going to make two years from now, care about the thickness, it's thin enough that you're not going to notice. Yeah. The same thing as the Nexus 7 and the iPad 3 and the iPad 4 and everything. All of this stuff is so thin, it doesn't matter. If you get much thinner, it's going to start feeling flimsy and scary. So uh, there's obviously a big battery in here, mm -hmm. and the battery life on iOS devices is typically very impressive, it's in, especially the standby. Yeah. So uh, we haven't had it long enough to do standby. I haven't not used it for a week to see how long it takes to run down. Uh, but on normal use, like the kind of get up in the morning, check your email, maybe read a little bit of your book, uh, play a game of letterpress, then leave it for the day, and then come back and use it again in the evening. It seems like two or three days of use in, in a kind of real world scenario. When I was using the hell out of it for four or five hours, I got five, six hours of normal, uh, of full use, uh, Wi Fi and everything uh, without having to charge, and was only down to maybe 30%, 28% on the battery. Because what I'm finding is with the Nexus 7, which I'm using for my seven inch tablet, mm -hmm. Even if I don't use it, I have to charge it every other day. Seems like every third day is, yeah. is where my Nexus 7 ends up. Uh, I, I think this is comparable. I mean, I think the battery life is good enough that it doesn't matter. I mean, that's the yeah. that's the t it's the Kindle situation that applies here. Uh, I mean, you're not going to get two weeks of use on this or a month of use on this as you will with the newer Kindles. But it's also a full color screen with the backlight and all that, so I kind of wouldn't expect that. Now we have the Wi-Fi version. There mm -hmm. is an LTE version. It's coming later this month. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the pricing on these is the same as it's always been with iPads. The 16 gigabyte version starts at $330. Mm -hmm. uh, it's $100 for each storage upgrade. So $100 to go from 16 to 32, and then another $100 to go from 32 to 64. And if you want to sell your modem, it's th it's $130 on top of that. On AT&T um, or Verizon. Or Sprint. They're or doing Sprint. a Sprint version as yes. well. So the price range is $330. $330, all the way up to max out 64 gig with LTE, yeah. $660. Yeah. So uh, price is, a, is an interesting place. They're 130 bucks or 130 bucks more than the cheap Nexus 7 at this yeah. point, which is a pretty big gap. Uh, I feel like if you're invested in iOS and you like the apps and you play games and you like the ecosystem, it's probably worth paying that. Um, it's it's this is much more of a consumption device than say a 10 inch iPad. I, I can't imagine hooking a keyboard up to this and using it to type and, and actually write stuff. So it's a little harder to justify the more expensive cost. Because it really is an iPad 2, which Apple still sells. It is an iPad for two. For $400, it is an iPad 2 shrunk down and $70 cheaper yeah. at 330. I think it's a good place for someone who owns maybe an iPod Touch and wants to go to a tablet and doesn't have the full size iPad, their first iOS tablet. Uh, but if you only want to spend $200, $250, the Nexus 7 right now is still a great buy. So if you want something to play Netflix movies and to watch video and stuff on, definitely go with the Nexus 7, go with the Kindle Fire, whatever. Um, if This is for people who are invested in iOS, maybe like their iPad but think it's too heavy, want to get rid of that. I would say that there will probably be a lot of iPad 3s for sale this holiday. Yeah, so you are switching over to the iPad mini. I haven't completely decided yet, but I think I'm probably going to. The question for me is, do I keep the Kindle Paperwhite and the iPad 3 
and use them both for their own things? Or do I just get rid of both of those and only carry one thing? Like that seems to fit more with the way I want to live my life. So one thing I did notice is I find myself using the iPad mini in landscape mode much more often than, than you did, than I did example, with the 10-inch iPad. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think it's an extra horizontal resolution, but things just seem to fill it out a little bit better and it, and it works better as a horizontal uh, device than the bigger iPad. But in landscape mode, thumb typing with a keyboard is actually a little more difficult almost unusable, and thumb typing in portrait is very usable. So one of the things that I found is that you you definitely do t like type from the corners with in portrait resolution. In landscape, it's much more of a kind of hunt and peck. There's no analog to touch typing like you can with the 10-inch iPad uh, when you're in landscape mode. Um, we should talk about accessories a little bit, though. Oh, yes, there are accessories. New, yeah. new smart cover. So there's a new smart cover. I got the blue one. Uh, they're all polyurethane this time. There's no leather options. So with the iPad, the, the full-size iPad, you could get a leather option. Uh, it's got a, like a velvet soft stuff inside, felt inside. That still stays the same. But the big change is the hinge. Uh, on the existing, the older versions, there's a metal hinge. Which typically scuffed the back a little bit. It scuffed the back a little bit, but it, it's pretty sturdy and it seems like it would last. There's no bendy plastic parts except for in the, in the seams. Uh, there's a couple of things that are weird about this. This is just polyurethane through here. So I worry that that's not gonna age particularly well. The this, poly this might tear. Yeah, the poly well, the polyurethane covers get dirty and are hard to clean anyway. That's why I went with leather, leather on the latest generation. There's no leather option. Um, the other thing is, this is four folds. Yeah. So when you fold it into the triangle to make the stand, it, it, it folds back on itself and the magnets lock. With this, there's no magnet. It's actually kind of easy to push down and knock it loose, okay. um, just like you did. Uh, I didn't find that a problem. I think probably if I were buying a case for this, I would go with a sleeve and maybe build a stand or something like that if you mm -hmm. want to have a vertical stand for it. Uh, I don't think that the smart cover is particularly good. And it's 40 bucks, which is a crazy amount of money for, for what it is. Now, uh, going back to it is an iPad 2 A5 processor. On the fourth gen iPads, mm -hmm. full-size iPads, they have an A6X. Yes. There is a big performance difference. So the A6X is a clocked up version of the A6. Is, or, Apple doesn't say any of this stuff, yeah. but the assumption based on benchmarks and electron microscopy is that it is a clocked up version of the A6. Um, I didn't find performance to be a problem at all with this. Some apps do load a little bit slower than they do on the iPhone 5. Mm -hmm. um, in most circumstances, you're probably not going to notice the difference between an A5 and an A6. The places that you will are on like app load times for games that have to load assets and stuff like that. That mm -hmm. goes much faster with the faster processor. Um, but normal, like just browsing the web, scrolling back and forth, moving the OS around, you know, moving, moving to, there's no hitch. For search, yep. For search. Um, all that stuff you doesn't really notice. Um, I, I think performance is fine for what it is. Now, the interesting thing for me is if you're gonna buy an iPad, do you buy this one or do you wait next year when the potential of a retina screen is there, which would be a huge upgrade for this device, uh, the potential of a faster processor. I, I mean, I think, I think if you look at this as a competitor for the iPad, if you fully kit this out, a 32 gigabyte, uh, 32 gigabyte with cellular modem version cost 60 bucks more, I think, than the base level 16 gigabyte, no, no cellular Wi-Fi only 10 inch iPad. So at that point, it gets to be really compelling because it's a much more, much more comfortable package. The trade-off is, of course, the screen. I hope that they'll release a Retina version next year, but of course, we don't know what Apple's going to do, and that could be next Christmas before we see it. So. Um, iPad mini, I think it's really good. Yeah, it really fulfills this promise of one-handed tablet computing for iOS. Yeah. Something we've kind of got with Nexus 7 with the Kindle Fire HD, but now there is a, a, a competitor in the iOS space. It's, it's definitely more of a consumption device than the 10-inch iPad. You're never going to plug the keyboard. I don't think you're going to plug the keyboard in and use it as a, as a creation device. But as a compliment for an for a Ultrabook and an ebook reader, I think this is a really killer device. So, for tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. See you guys later. Bye.